From the Oregon State University Extension Service, this is Pollination, a podcast that tells the stories of researchers, land managers, and concerned citizens making bold strides to improve the health of pollinators. I'm your host, Dr. Adoni Melithopoulos, Assistant Professor in Pollinator Health in the Department of Horticulture. If you're a beekeeper, you always get a call sometime in the summer about somebody who's had a swarm that's landed on a bush and wondering if you could come remove it. Now, as a beekeeper here in Oregon, you will have added your name to the Oregon State Beekeepers Association swarm list, uh, and then you'll get calls. And actually, catching swarms is really easy. You can increase your colonies this way, and it's a great service to provide back to the public. Now, occasionally, you get a call from somebody who says, I've got bees in a compost bin, or I've got bees in a wall or in a crawl space. And those are very complicated. Now, I know recently there's um, a viral video about a beekeeper uh, in Austin, Texas, who removes bee colonists colonies from spaces almost effortlessly wearing no gear. And I just am here to tell you that's a little bit more complicated than YouTube tells you. So to get the real deal on what's involved with getting bees out of tricky spaces, I reach out to Charlie Moyer. Now, Charlie is the vice president with Douglas County Bees, which is, I think, the only bee club here in Oregon that offers as a service to the public getting bees out of walls and crawl spaces and so forth. Um, Charlie's also a district forester with Roseburg Forest Products, and that's how I know him because together we're in this program called Real Oregon, the Resource Education and Agricultural Leadership Program. We were in in the third class, we're classmates together uh, in Newport, Oregon, where we're learning about some of the challenges with managing commercial fisheries. Anyways, we stole a few minutes away uh, at one of the breaks to talk about beekeeping. Uh, and so on this episode, getting bees out of tricky places with Charlie Moyer this week on Pollination. We are in Newport for a reason. Correct. Yeah, we're in Newport for uh, Real Oregon, which is uh, Resources, Education, Agriculture Leadership Program. And it's been great. This is our third session. So we've, we're part of this uh, really vibrant group of uh, ag and natural resource professionals. And we've been... Yeah, having a good time all across Oregon. And so, you know, our next session is up in Salem, which is going to be fun um, getting to more introduction into the legislature. But, you know, today... Uh, we're going to have a little chat about bees, correct? We're going to have a chat about bees. And we, we, in Newport, we've been seeing like the, the wonderful ag resource sector here. There's the fisheries and we've seen, you know, really remarkable, um, uh, remarkable ways in which people are, 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 you know, making sure everything works. And this has been, but the, the, the session before we were in Roseburg. Correct. My hometown. Your hometown so. where you're also vice president of the Douglas County Beekeepers Association. That's correct. So. I've uh, been vice president just a few months because our, our current past president um, passed away and our current vice president passed away and they asked me to step up and help out with that. I've been a beekeeper for just over two years, um, mostly doing top bar hives, but with the Douglas County Bees, we do uh, swarm calls. So, you know, if people see swarms that are near their property or um, you know, near the businesses, they'll give us a call and we'll come out and uh, try and get them uh, recaptured and rehomed into a into a, a hive somewhere. Or in other cases that people have either a residential house or a business where um, bees have colonized and we'll help do a free removal on them if if sometimes with their help. So. Now that's the remarkable thing because yes. you know most anybody knows if you have a swarm you can go to the OSBA swarm list and there's a list of names there are people to call and you know beekeeper will show up and collect the swarms. But the thing that I hadn't really heard about and it seems that you and Douglas County are real pros at is removing uh, bee colonies when they uh, move into a space. And just for our listeners who don't know much about bee biology, why are why would you find a honey bee colony? Uh, in a structure, so in a structure, they're um, they're looking for uh, space so that they are protected from the environment, somewhere nice and warm where they can um, build their comb and readily accessible to you know the natural resources, the pollination centers around the area. And some of these, I think, like I believe, they're 
you know, it's mimicking like a, in nature they would go into a tree cavity. Correct. And they, we, they don't know it's a crawl space. Right. We, we actually <laughs> did, did do a removal from a tree cavity. Somebody was rehabbing their yard and it was in a tree. Um, but we've had uh, crawl spaces um, in walls of building, in soffits of buildings. We've had one business, uh, actually two businesses where they were in the walls. Um, oh. One was 24 feet up in the air. So, you know, we've got um, our community, we have volunteers that donate um, some materials and allow us to use scaffolding or in situations where, you know, it's a business and they've got, uh, they've got other facilities available, you know, we'll take a scissor lift or some, some kind of lift to get us a little closer to the bee. So oh, it's amazing. So it's not as dangerous. So, okay. So this is a, this is, you know, I, we, we had this conversation before we came into the session, getting a swarm can be, you know, it's on a bush, you shake it into a box, you move away. This is much more involved. You talked about scissor lifts and scaffolds. Correct. And I imagine you have to get, the bees are coming in through a little hole and you can't get the colony out through that little hole. Correct. So, <laughs> so a big part of this is, you know, we have our president of our organization of uh, Douglas County Bees. He'll go out and scope the area and kind of come up with a plan. And then we'll have our cutout team. Um, and it's Douglas County Bees is about sixty plus members. Um, and we'll do a call out of like, hey, we need some help on this. And everybody, um, those that are interested. And we, we have actually a cutout list of folks that want to receive those bees. So they have all their gear ready and they'll be part of the, the team that comes in that will um, break into the, uh, the existing hive that's in the building and then pull the bees out, pull the honeycomb out, pull, you know, the other debris that's out of there. And we try and we try to replace what we can on there, you know, you know, kind of like golfing where we re replace our divots. So, <laughs> well, I can I can imagine as well that, you know, you, you know, as soon as you use any equipment on a wall or surface, you need to cut away. Bees get agitated. That's just an inevitability of it. Correct, and and we've tried to do uh, just due to the nature of our uh, our group. You know, we try to do these on weekends, and sometimes they start stacking up because you really can only do this in April through June at the latest. Um, and we try to get there pre-dawn so that the bees aren't out scouting and and out bringing pollination. You know, pollen back in. But um, the first thing we try to do when we get there is block their opening and then dig into whatever structure it is to, to do it. And it might be that we're bringing in um, power tools or uh, taking off siding off a building or, um, or removing soffits or other, other things on the building to get in there. And unfortunately, there's some instances where we, we can't get them. Um, what we thought was a easily accessible area just doesn't work and um unfortunately we we can't get we can't save every bee but we try so okay so let's uh, let's just say you were able to get the siding off or whatever off and you've got the colony you know exposed there so what's the uh how do you you know the bees are all flying around they're all agitated like how do you get the bees and the comb out, because I imagine some of these spaces are really like the bees don't make it like in a box, like you've got comb, comb, comb. It's like down a very narrow space or something. Tell us how. Sure. Um, a good example was we had um, bees that were uh, in between the floorboards from the first floor to the second floor. And so, you know, think, thinking of a, a two by eight structure and the bees had um, curved their comb around so that, oh you goodness. know, you've, you've got a seven inch tall comb, but that comb could extend two feet into the building. So it's like, it, it's kind of like peeling an onion. You'll, you peel one layer back at a time and oh. we, we use a bee vacuum. So, you know, kind of a, uh, a shop back or sometime subtype of a machine that can, um, gently pull the bees off of the comb and into, into the vacuum chamber where, you know, they're safe and, that must be tricky. It is very tricky. Vacuuming bees, just um, getting yeah. them without damaging them. Without damaging them and without damaging the comb too much. Mm -hmm. um, for, you know, the nice thing is like once you get uh, the queen in there, um, I'm very poor at finding the queen, but <laughs> the, the easiest part is that the queen, um, once the queen is, is in that vacuum or in that chamber, a lot of the bees want to follow and, and you can 
tell by the the actions of the bees that oh we got the queen in there now they're all gonna, they're all going to want to follow so it's oh. very easy to just keep working at it and and by the time we've cleared out an area i mean we may be down to 50 or 100 bees flying in the air okay so and so you take the comb out you and, but i imagine you know for Co the comb is kind of crazy comb. Correct. Doesn't fit the. It, re it doesn't fit regular equipment. So how right. do you? Uh, so so we have a whole nother. We have you know the 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 team that's with the vacuum and cutting the comb, and then we have another team on the ground. You know the ground crew, and they're um, as as I'm cutting the comb, I'm putting into a cookie tray mm -hmm. and transporting it to the ground, and then they'll take it from the cookie <laughs> tray. We have to make sure we have the right orientation. You know, up uh -huh. is up, and we'll put it into a frame with rubber bands and and then just stack it into oh. an existing uh, box that that the person who's receiving the bees that's their equipment and they're ready to go so we'll follow them home or give them the box uh, the chamber that has got the bees from the vacuum and yeah. then the, they've brought the box with uh, their frames that are oh, now kind of filled with new them in. you're making them fit yeah, yeah unfortunately yeah we're we're huh. trying to make them fit you know we're always looking for brood we're always looking for capped honey but then we have a lot of waste as well so i um, and we'll take we try and take care of that all because i mean the homeowner is just like I didn't want to kill these bees, but I really don't want them coming back either. That so. must be the thing is that the, I get that a lot. People, they're like, I've got bees in a tricky place. I know bees are in trouble. I want to protect them, but can you help me? That's probably the first conversation Co you have. Correct. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and some of these, it's we try our hardest at them. Unfortunately, you know, there's a handful of them that just don't work. I mean, the the space is inaccessible or the, the bees are just... Um, they weren't where we thought they were. You know, we'll use uh, thermal cameras to kind of pinpoint where the bees are, and then I'll be darned. And then start digging oh, into the outside of the house, or in some cases, the inside of the house, uh -huh. to uh, go after the bees. Okay, so now you've got the bees in the box. Do you do you leave it there overnight to try and attract any foragers that are still? No, our our hope is that we got most of them right then, and then you move and, away, and then we move them away because we want to get them to their new home before the heat builds up. And I mean, we're transporting these bees and we've had instances where they get overheated and we could lose an entire colony uh, fairly easily. Okay, how, how many of these have uh, Douglas County Bees uh, beekeepers done? Um, in this last year, we did in excess of 20. Really? Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, and I was, wow. I was part of about 10 of them. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I do work full time at uh, Rosberg Forest Products as a forester, so um, I try to help out as much as I can. One, um, this past year was actually on our one of our mill sites down in Riddle. It was actually built in a wall behind some electrical equipment. So it was kind of <laughs> so their their instance was you know they saw some bees flying around, but they actually had honey dripping out of the walls, and they're like, hey, it's really great, but we need to move the bees out of here. What was the what was the uh, most kind of challenging one that you uh, can remember? Uh, one of the most challenging ones was uh, it was a soffit in a uh, log cabin. So it was the roof soffit, and you know we're already um, you know twelve to fifteen feet up in the air, um, and um, cutting into the soffit and the bee, you know. You get some gentle bees that are not a problem, you know, um, but this hive was, as soon as I got it open, they went all over me. Um, the, bee, the other beekeeper that was helping me, he, he had to abandon it because he was getting stung. I was getting stung. I think at the end of that day, I wound up with over 50 hits. Um, thankfully, I have not had the uh, allergic reactions yet. So, you know, we keep watch of that. We make sure that we have EpiPens available and um, I guess watch out for each other. You're in, you know, I think the planning process that you talked at the beginning seems so important because you are, you may be quite a ways off the ground and getting stung and distracted and like safety issues could Correct. be really important. Right, and, and it's a lot of making sure of your foot placement and making sure that, you know, you're not kicking a tool off onto somebody down below you and or that you're working at the pace for, for, the, for the grand crew as well so that they can get the comb free of bees into the frames and into their box so that you know that they're not having to fight the bees at the same time too. Uh, how big a team do you get usually field for one of those? Um, we've usually field uh, four to six people is is a small side you know we've had upwards of a dozen because um, we've had you know local contractors that are masons that are want involved and we've taken down chip you know 
portions of chimneys on houses mm -hmm. and gone after be you know comb and bees so the last question i have sure. for you because I, I see people filtering in is um i imagine a lot of bee, bee clubs are interested in getting involved in doing this the, the calls happen and i guess one and we got a good resource now called right. douglas county but um what you get the call what kind of questions do you ask because i imagine many times they're a bumblebee or they're a wasp and how do you, what kind of questions do you ask somebody right at the front end to figure out, you know, the, what's, what's involved here? Right. I mean, you know, thankfully a lot of people have smartphones, so they're able to take a picture of, of what they see oh, right. and hopefully we can identify it. But, you know, where are they? How high off the ground might they be? Um, how long have they been there? Uh -huh. We've gotten instances, oh yeah, they just arrived and... Um, you know, we'll see that fresh white comb as we're removing the bees. In other cases, they're like, we don't know. It could have been several years, and yeah. we've gotten bees that have been four or five years in the same area. So um, somewhat of the construction of the building, too, kind of gives us a hint of what tools we may, uh, need to be involved. So, Oh, I have just one last, last of question. Of course. One last, last question is, do the, uh, having bees in your structures, do they cause damage? In some cases, they will cause damage um, that, that they're kind of compressing, um, they're compressing the insulation, they're, they're moving around the wiring and things like that. Um, if you have somebody in your house that's allergic, they may, you know, occasionally come into the house. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's a concern for some folks. So. Are there instances where you might say, oh, no, just leave it? In some cases, if it's an abandoned house and they're not going to do anything with it, why yeah. mess with it? Mm -hmm. um, but in other cases, um, they wanted to sell the house or they wanted to do improvements to the house. And, you know, these bees are just in the way or they're doing some other activity that would um, harm the bees. So they, 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 they need to move on. Well, oh, I hear Tootsie Rolls have arrived. So. Okay, well, darn it, sugar. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's, a really, it's really amazing that the Beekeeping Association has taken this on. I think this is a real model for the state and for listeners in bee clubs across the country for uh, pulling this together. All right. Congratulations. Thank you very much, and you're welcome, Aunt Adoni. Thank you so much for listening. The show is produced by Quinn Sin and Neil, who's a student here at OSU in the New Media Communications Program. And the show wouldn't even be possible without the support of the Oregon Legislature, the Foundation for Food and Agricultural Research, and Western SARE. Show notes with links mentioned on each episode are available on the website, which is at pollinationpodcast.oregonstate.edu. I also love hearing from you, and there's several ways to connect with me. The first one is you can visit the website and leave an episode-specific comment. You can suggest a future guest or topic or ask a question that could be featured in a future episode. But you can do the same things on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook by visiting the Oregon Bee Project. Thanks so much for listening, and see you next week.